Can I cover the getting started guide with AWS and TerraSpace? To do that, we're gonna click on getting started right here. Then we choose the AWS icon. That takes us to the getting started guide right here. And then we'll just go to the next page. So the first step is to install TerraSpace. So here's the command to install it by the gem installer. There's also additional installers. Uh, I'll show you the other installers here. The standalone installer, which is pretty popular for a lot of folks. And also a Docker actually installer that folks actually use too. Uh, I prefer the gem installer just because I like to have a little more control over the entire system install, but it's up to you. Okay, uh, after that's installed, you also need to install actually Terraform. So uh, that's a requirement. <laughs> so you definitely have to install that. I recommend for that using TFEMV. TFEMV will just allow you to switch to the latest version of Terraform if you need to and then switch back really quickly. And that's actually important because Terraform moves actually quite quickly. Okay, uh, and then I'm gonna run this command just so everything's kind of verified. Okay, so you can see TerraSpace uh, setup check. We'll check your TerraSpace version and Terraform version, kind of make sure that everything's kind of properly set up. Okay, uh, once that's kind of done, the next step is actually configuring your credentials. And this is sometimes actually the hardest part for folks. Um, you just have to kind of configure your .abus folder here, and you can just run the uh, AWS configure command, which will just prompt you and then kind of take it through interactively. So I kind of explained it here by actually showing the files, just in case uh, we go through the interactive process and you do something uh, uh, by mistake or accident, then you know exactly how it kind of works. But essentially the way it works is, uh, you have a uh, .abus folder in your home directory. There's a config file there with your configurations specific to that profile. And then there's a credentials actually uh, file that has your, your secret information here. So that's all you really have to configure. That's what the uh, AWS configure command essentially does. And then here, you can see what I do is uh, I'm basically exporting AWS profile. So it uses the dev profile here. Uh, and then I also use this trick where I shell out to AWS configure get region just to make sure that AWS region kind of upon startup matches uh, whatever is configured in this uh, config setting here. And then uh, I will recommend running this command, uh, AWS STS uh, get color identity, just to verify that you're connected properly, and especially the right account. Okay, so uh, that's uh, looking pretty good. Okay, next step now. Okay, now we get to the step uh, where we actually get to use TerraSpace here. So I'm gonna grab this command right here and I'll explain how it works. Okay, so what this command does, uh, TerraSpace project, uh, new project infra dash dash plugin AWS examples. Okay, dash dash plugin just basically says use the AWS uh, plugin from TerraSpace, which is gonna add a bunch of conveniences like automatically creating the S3 uh, backend bucket. And then dash dash examples will generate some starter examples that work right off the bat. Okay, so let's run that. So that basically generates some, some, uh, some project right there. And you see it in the folder and you run tree, you can see the starter structure that was all generated and kind of given for free, which is pretty nice. Okay, uh, now what are we supposed to do next? It says review the config files. Okay, so let's review the config files. So let's go ahead and open that up and uh, open config, Terraform and backend and provider. Okay, so let's look at both of those real quickly. So uh, uh, here's the backend TF. And uh, folks that are used to normal Terraform know exactly what it is, but they might be uh, a little bit taken back by this. Basically, you see, there's ERB templating language support here. So what TerraSpace does is it takes the files and essentially config Terraform as well as other files, you write Terraform files, and it pre-processes them via templating, okay? So this gives you just enough power if you need to in order to do some things um, dynamically outside of uh, Terraform, actually. And uh, what we're seeing right here is the expansion helper that's built into TerraSpace. And this expansion helper is actually, um, will expand this, these uh, variables right here that you see in all cap locks, account region and EMB. Uh, it will expand that out uh, actually per, is specific to um, plugin provider. And so what this does is it allows you to manage this config Terraform backend TF in a centralized way, but then use different state files and even buckets uh, for, for different modules that you want to deploy. Okay, and so this is this uh, keeps your, your your state file manageable and everything essentially. Uh, so you can see the expansion pattern there, and then uh, you can see that also configures the DynamoDB table there called Terraform Locks. Okay, and then uh, the other one is the provider. So this one, uh, this might be interesting to point out too. It's all commented out. So the reason it's all commented out is because actually this allows you to um, launch your same code in different regions very easily. Actually, so you don't actually have to configure this region uh, in your provider. That's only if, let's say, you use only one region, and then that's where maybe it might sense to actually comment this out and hard code actually the region that you kind of want, okay? Uh, but if you want to deploy the multiple regions, then you actually just, uh, you could just uh, have this comment out, okay? And remember, these are just starters, so uh, it's just starters to get you going. You can always change it, okay? All right, okay, so I reviewed the config files, which I was, what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Next page, 
review the project. Okay, so now we're gonna actually review some of the project structures. So review the app modules, review the stack modules, and talk about the difference between modules and stacks in the TerraSpace world. Okay, so uh, if you go click on here, expand this out, you see there's a starter module here, okay? And then you can see there's, um, I'm just gonna focus on only the main.tf code, okay? So on the left-hand side is the starter module, the example module, and the right-hand side is the demo uh, stack, okay? So what's the difference between stacks and modules? Well, there's kind of like no differences in the Terraform world because they're both modules, okay? And everything in Terraform though is a module. They, um, they're very non-biased, so they give, give you no know, kind of structure whatsoever. And some structure uh, is nice. So just so you kind of know where to put things, okay? One less thing to think about. So anyway, TerraSpace uh, says, uh, you should organize your stacks here and stacks are basically meant to be deployed, okay? So this is what you deploy. Uh, and what I will recommend is actually starting off with stacks. And then uh, if you can figure out a way to kind of uh, make it reusable, that's when I would move into a module. So that's what a module is. A module is a reusable module or a module that's more internal that's not meant to be deployed, okay? So uh, I will start off with stacks, deploy that. But you can see in the starter example, what happens is it's actually using this module example right here, which creates an S3 bucket, okay? And so it's just some starter examples to under, uh, explain the structure and everything, okay? So uh, that's the... Uh, covering app modules and stack modules and covers the difference between the two of them. And remember, it's mainly just for organizational purposes. Stacks are meant to be deployed and, uh, and modules are kind of more for meant for internal use, okay? And you don't really even need a module, you just deploy only the stack and be uh, be done with it, okay? Okay, next page, deploy the infrastructure. So we're gonna grab this command, terraspace up demo, okay? I'm actually gonna show you another command in here. So terraspace list, okay? It's gonna show you actually all your modules and all your stacks there. Now we're gonna run terraspace up demo. And when you run that, you're gonna see what it does is it builds basically this TerraSpace cache folder, right? So what it did was it grabbed um, all the coding or app modules and app stacks as well as config Terraform, okay? And then it built it into this uh, cache folder right here, okay? And you see it's also creating the, uh, the S3 state bucket right now as well as DynoDB table, okay? Uh, and basically builds into this cache. So let's make it very clear what it's doing by actually opening up back in TF here. Okay, and opening up TerraSpace cache and going all the way down here. See, basically combine all the files there. And then now back in TF is uh, materialized or built. Now, now let's, if you put on top of each other, you can really see what happens here. See this expansion helper? It got replaced by actually the expanded value here, right here. See? So uh, now you can basically have different buckets and different backends very easily. And the, the, the key is it's actually be controlled all centrally, right? So it makes it very clear and simple. It's a single direction of processing here, okay? Uh, here, I should type in yes, enter value. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the bucket now, okay? So that's creating the bucket. So let's actually go take a look at the buckets that were created. Let's go to the S3 council here and hit refresh, okay? And now you can see the buckets uh, have been created, okay? So the buckets are created. This is the bucket, bucket trusted cult. That's what uh, the random pet name was uh, that we got here. And then here's the Terraform state bucket, essentially, that was uh, created by TerraSpace and uh, basically uh, managed by TerraSpace, okay? So, uh, Actually, I should point that out. So this bucket here is managed by your Terraform code. This bucket here is managed by TerraSpace in the sense that it's created initially upon the, your, your um, first deployment. And then this is gonna be kept around, even if you tear down if you do, later on when we tear, destroy this infrastructure, this bucket is kept around because it has the state, it has the history, okay? So, um, so that's how that works. Okay, so next step, let's see what we're supposed to do next. Okay, deploy the infrastructure, next page. Now this talks about, okay, making a change to infrastructure. Okay, so to make a change for infrastructure, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at um, the main.tf in app stacks demo main.tf, okay? So that's uh, over there on the right-hand side there, now it's in the middle, okay, or right, uh, the only one that's open, okay. So this one, you can see there's a var here, var ACL, and we open up variables here, there's a variable ACL. So, in order to change uh, the infrastructure, what you should do, uh, generally speaking, in Terraform, is you should use TFVAR files uh, if you can. That way you can reuse your code, okay? So uh, TerraSpace uh, encourages this uh, because that's uh, what uh, makes sense. <laughs> so uh, in order to uh, do this, you could actually, I guess, change the default value, but it's better to use TFVAR files. And instead of actually manually building the TFVAR files, you can actually generate them. So you go TerraSpace, a seed, and then demo the name of the stack. And what it does is it actually generates uh, this tfr file is exactly where it needs to go by parsing actually this variables.tf file and then they actually building this right here by uh, building the optional values here and the, the neat thing is you can actually generate different tfr files for different environments let's say if you have a broad environment then you can use the same code with different environments right there you see 
But we're going to focus on the dev environment here. Okay, so I'm going to change this from uh, ACL private to ACL public read. Okay, so now we're kind of ready to apply it. Okay, so TerraSpace up demo here. And this time I'm going to use the dash Y option. Okay, so the neat thing about the dash Y option is it will um, basically uh, run a plan no matter what. So that way, if you're doing a big Terraform apply that takes a long time, you walk away, you come back and you see what was actually changed versus um, it just not showing you. Okay. So that's actually been applied now. You can see that uh, the um, ACL has been changed from private to public read, okay? That actually probably takes us, I think, to the next step right here where you're supposed to uh, update the infrastructure, okay? Uh, let's actually verify this by looking at the S3 console and refreshing this, and you can see that this has uh, changed right here, okay? There's a nice warning sound here because it's public read on the, uh, the bucket level, okay? Okay, and then, uh, so we've gotten through update infrastructure now. Um, now we'll just do next page and destroy infrastructure. So the command to do that is TerraSpace down, which essentially calls ter Terraform destroy, okay? So we'll run that Terraform down, demo the stack again. It builds the, uh, the cache folder and then it runs Terraform destroy right here. And shortly here, it's gonna prompt us. So we just enter yes, and now it's destroying the bucket. Okay, so there, the bucket, it has now been destroyed. And we go back here and refresh. So we'll point this out. This bucket, the uh, trust and cults can be gone, but the state bucket, of course, is gonna be kept around for state. So we have history, okay? Now, of course, you can always delete that anytime you want, okay? So you could delete that and also make sure to delete the DynoB table too, okay? That holds the locks, okay? But um, yeah, it just keeps uh, the state there because that doesn't uh, make sense to be in Terraform itself, actually. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Let's look at next steps. So next steps is just uh, more documentation here. There's some videos that cover more usage here. And there's just uh, some talk about additional features dry generators, multiple environments, which we kind of touched lightly. There's a, a bunch of more documentation here, but hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.